Hi everyone, Wally Nichols for the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending May the 7th, 2021. What a choppy trade we had this week. And uh, you know, like I'm saying in the, uh, in the presentation, no one ever went broke take a profit. So I warned you last week, be careful out there. And uh, speaking of last week, let me just real quickly tell you that it was uh, the, the the video was done and it was available on YouTube. It's just that uh, because of a technical glitch in the email uh, distribution system, the image didn't uh, come up, and therefore you weren't provided a link uh, per se in that uh, last week's email. It was there, so I didn't miss anything. It's just that the system didn't pick it up. So what I've done is I've stuck it underneath this one's in this week's email. So you can go on YouTube and don't forget to like and subscribe so that we share this with as many people as possible. But also, uh, it's good information, right? But also because, uh, so you can look at the April 30th, 210430, and we talked about trust. That's a very important topics in that, in that video, in last uh, week's video, because what we were talking about was the Biden tax program changes. And so you need to know some solutions for some of those changes. So remember to like and subscribe both of these. This week, uh, we're going to talk about the reopening trade and some of the potpourri that we got in there, also related to the Biden administration. They pulled a bumble this week. Uh, so, well, anyway, let's get into it. All right, so this week let's talk about the reopening trade and some other miscellaneous uh, topics that came up. Here's our weekly disclosure statements. You can always go to assetguidancegroup.com and, uh, and, and download uh, Forms ADV and everything that, uh, that the law requires us to tell you about uh, before uh, we uh, allow you to uh, make investments with us. And also check out on our uh, storefront, if you go to assetguidancegroup.com, you'll see you'll see a chance to uh, for 401k plan advice and, and in-service plan advice. To the extent that you're, and I'm and I'm I'm going to be stay tuned here throughout the month of May. We're going to broaden the scope of this offering, but uh, uh, to the extent that you have or are still working and you and you're still contributing to an in-service uh, employer-provided 401k. 403B, 457, whatever, qualified plans, check out this monthly subscription service for, for pennies a day. Uh, we're making clients thousands. They love it. They rave about it. You should too. Let's jump into this week, last week's trade, uh, 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 how it went out. And my, my thing on here is, look, nobody ever went broke taking profits I, I didn't coin that phrase i don't know who did that's that's been uh, around this industry forever okay and it was true and it's true this week and indeed our our key goal, uh, objective here is preservation of client wealth and so and so we're hedged and so uh, uh people are, are safe right now very choppy when they when these aircraft carriers turn they leave a lot of wake out there and uh, we're in a small boat and uh, as is everybody really unless you're one of the uh, you know in terms of even the big boys up there that, that are driving the aircraft carriers there's still only a few individuals in there and, and in each one of them within those trades within those big funds uh, that, that are moving these big money is still is still one people so really all of us are collectively uh, in the, the big ocean, but each decision maker is uh, is in a small uh, area. Key observations, moving from the philosophy into the situation. What I'm saying is, I warned you a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, to be careful out there. And, and we're seeing that this, this week, uh, this reopening trade, reminiscent of October 2020, uh, when the pandemic uh, trade started shifting. And what we're seeing now, we saw the large caps, uh, really everybody kind of behaving uh, every, except NASDAQ. And that's tech heavy growth NASDAQ, despite earnings crushes, okay? This, this rotation continues, NASDAQ busted its 50-day moving average. Let's take a look at some of these. This is the S&P 500. You're seeing now two times this week, okay, up through Thursday. Friday's trade's not uh, yet in, but up through Thursday, what, what you see is them breaking 
the uh, the the short term moving averages. That's really an 18 day, 20 day. That's right in that range when you would expect it to take a bounce. If they're going to, I would have rather. I, I liked the fact that it that it sat on support and closed above support. That support being that 20 day, uh, as it was as it was closing out. Uh, the trade, but uh, the, the fact that it pierced those moving averages means that, ow, uh, it could have gone lower. So that was kind of, that's kind of a, a, a reason to look at that and go, hey, let's uh, maintain our profit margins here. Same deal um, uh, with the NASDAQ, only much lower down with the 50 day broke outside. Really, really uh, the uh, a weak downtrend that could strengthen, okay? Get a little bit of positive momentum here towards the end of the week, but that that could continue, could continue, could run through the summer, could run through the to the end of the year. This reopening trade, a lot of smart people out there are, are thinking that maybe that's the end of that. Here's the deal. Look, look back, you don't have to look back very far, all right? And then in, in, in history, five, five, 10 years, then, then look ahead, all right, go back 20. And then and 21 years, and then, and then and then look ahead, see what the trends are right now, and think of this, think of this. Um, tech is becoming increasingly involved in everything. You've got some issues right now with chip providers. Okay, uh, it takes a lot of raw materials, takes a long time uh, to 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 make chips. The pandemic slowed down all of that process, interrupted the supply line. Here we're looking at the at the mid caps. Same story, breaking that short-term moving averages. But but my point is this: uh, as in terms of, of of the Nasdaq and growth, it's not going to last very long because of the nature of things. So next year, you have to uh, uh, think. Uh, as I shift into small caps here, same story on the near-term moving averages. But look, let me finish the thought on on, on tech and growth. Because it's in, it's in embedding itself into absolutely everything, so we're seeing some rotation right now. But it is don't count it out because it's not a long term thing. It can't be really, and so uh, you can look at it as taking a longer, arguably much needed rest uh, in, in as the rotation continues and lets some other people squeeze into the play. But uh, but it's not it's not uh, gone. Okay, it's just it, it's just uh, it, tech is too involved in everything, and it's too big. And as time goes by, we expect that to, to really kick on back up. So I'm just telling you what's happening right now because right now is the pain that we feel, right, or the elation that you feel, knowing that. Uh, maybe your favorite uh, advisor uh, helps you take profit, and so you're okay, even though even if things uh, continue to to get uglier. All right, um, growth tanks uh, and and value and high dividend stocks steep, and I'm going to show you this in just a second here. And momentum took a, a took a real dive here, and then we'll look at this uh, consumer discretionary to staples ratio. Uh, that top line up there is the overall S&P 500. You can see that falling off pretty, uh, the large cap really falling down there. And then uh, what you had here is growth really, um, actually that top line's growth, and that's that's really falling down here. The red line, uh, the overall, the black line, that was the S&P 500, it kind of flat, just kind of flattened out. But growth really uh, demonstrably uh, 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 dropped, kind of falling off of a cliff there. And meanwhile, uh, value and high dividend, really, especially high dividend, but I, I mean, I think ballistic may be uh, an overstatement, but you're seeing a, a very, uh, very steep uh, increase there. This divergent here between uh, 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 momentum and, and, uh, and, and value uh, value is like that, that's what I'm talking about. Ballistic, okay. Looks like one of Elon Musk's uh, rockets. Uh, while um, while momentum uh, uh, looks like the the, the landing 
<laughs> gets made before before the successful one one time this week uh, um, come back and made it safe but anyway that that's a huge divergence so you see momentum plays growth plays not in the game anymore and this is the ratio of uh, consumer discretionary to consumer staples you can see that's down uh, just since uh, last week uh, over three uh, percent. Uh, 3.15 to be uh, exact, more precise, but uh, but it's actually down over the last uh, several weeks, more than that. So key observations moving forward. Um, I'm going to I'm going to give you these uh, sectors, these industries that you can look at. This is really the reopening trade. This is what's happening. But you got to realize. I mean, look, tech is in cars, microchips. Tech is in boats. It's the Internet of Things. This thing is going to continue to grow, the Internet of Things, which means tech is everywhere. So growth and NASDAQ just uh, just taken off. I mean, they, they carried us through the pandemic, They got and they're stepping back right now. These other guys are coming in. Speaking of medical and hospital, this is the potpourri section. Man, the Biden administration, in my view, and in the view of some other people, really made some boneheaded moves. I get it that they're trying to diminish China's significance in terms of being a hero to Southeast Asia and the subcontinent over there uh, in India because of the problems. But by giving up intellectual property rights is not going to change anything in the opinions of the people that are really uh, in the know in this in this uh, that part of the uh, of the industry and sector. The, the reason that, that, that they can't continue to make uh, insufficient vaccines, we have a surplus, it's not because their profit motive and is capitalism is bad. Capitalism is good. Capitalism created this cure, these miracle drugs and vaccines. The, the reason is, is because they don't have enough raw materials. They don't have enough vials to put it in and, and, and containers. That has been a recurring issue ever since the pandemic first hit in terms of containers to store hand sanitizers and things like that. I've seen that in conversations with uh, industry people all over the nation ever since the pandemic start, started. It didn't mean that you had to take somebody's intellectual property rights in order to up the production of the needed good. But what you need is more raw materials, more vials, all the inputs to these things. You don't have have to put this out there and make this an open thing for pirates then to steal, and that will end up leading to terroristic uh, actions, and that will end up leading to no good. Um, man, I hope that somebody in there, and I hope the president, somebody, somebody can 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 straighten him out on this. I mean, a lot of different ways to compete with China and be the good good uh, person in this, and wear the white hat, and and be the savior. Uh, for these uh, third world countries and and, and developing uh, uh, economies uh, to help them, and we need it to stop the variants. To be sure, doesn't mean you have to steal companies' intellectual property rights to do this. I'm going to stop the rant now. Medical hospital is still a good sector, but man, did those stocks tank uh, overnight with that news, and and they started rebounding today uh, 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 at the end of the week here, Moderna. Uh, and, uh, and and Pfizer and Bio, uh, BioNTech uh, tried to, to make some rallies here. Um, I think that they're, that story's not done yet. We'll see how it ends up. But uh, transportation, equipment, and leasing. What I'm looking at here is infrastructure. That's what we're going to be doing. All these trillions of dollars that they're, that they're uh, spending, this is where it's going to go. So if you're going to rebuild, you're going to create all these jobs, gonna, uh, then you're going to open up retail, miscellaneous, okay? Uh, restaurants will start coming back. People will be able to start to, to come back to work uh, in the restaurants industry. But retail and, and the miscellaneous and the leisure and recreational products, once you get people coming back to work, they've been pent up for a long time. They're making good money because there's a lot of infrastructure in this nation that must be rebuilt, they're going to reward themselves for making the trip by buying boats and any kind of outdoor sporting goods and all of that stuff. Uh, and, and, and that's retail miscellaneous, leisure or recreation, finish up with retail home furnishings. All right, sorry that I didn't mean to use up a lot of time uh, talking about policy here, but stunning. Capitalism good, 
uh, communism bad. There's a mixture in there. It's not. It's not an, a war. It's not. It's not an extreme here. It's just the mixture of of, of government and and uh, and, and capitalism. Uh, uh, if you go to extremes in either direction, there you get into trouble. We need to maintain a good balance, a healthy balance. Uh, come with us. We're, gonna make, we're we're saving people money. We're preserving their wealth. We're making them more money on the upside, and and we've made some profit. We there's a time to take profit. I side. Th this week was it. I'll see you next week. We'll see what ends up happening. We've got some exciting developments here at Asset Guidance Group. Stay tuned and remember to watch the other video in uh, the April 30th um, uh, series of the collection. Like and subscribe. You'll get the whole playlist. I'll see you next time.